Hi, I'm Shannon Skinner, and I'm speaking with Vienne Sharif. She's the owner of Dermatics Clinic in Vaughan. Tell us a little bit about your business, Dermatics Clinic. So Dermatics is a medical aesthetic clinic where we provide a wide range of medical aesthetic procedures such as laser hair removal, skin rejuvenation, skin peels, micros, and we also carry pharmaceutical skin care line and we also carry medical grade uh, makeup. So it's like a one-stop shop for everything that you need for your skin and, and your daily beautifying needs. Yeah. What was it like for you growing up in Iraq? Uh, when I was about six years old, the war happened between Iraq and Iran. So I had to experience um, many um, times where we, our city would be bombarded with, um, uh, with airplane strikes. And uh, I, was, I was very small um, and we just knew we were in war and just be prepared at any moment for things to happen to you. Give us a sense of what the Kurdish culture is like. The Kurds are a very unique nation because they're very mixed with um, many other um, influential that influence like influential countries surrounding Kurdistan. It's a very unique uh, culture in terms of also religions because we've got everyone. We've got um, Jewish and Christians and Muslims and they're all Kurdish. Uh, the area is lots of mountains, springs, flowers. Our clothes are very colorful and also the unique thing about my culture is that we love to dance, we love food and we're a very very peaceful nation so we always like to live in peace. We were very happy when the war stopped between Iraq and Iran and, um, and then the Gulf War happened and we were like oh another war. So it wasn't just the, the war and the bombs, it was also the sanction the economy sanction on the country that really affected it. It affects your way of life, yeah. And something about the Kurds is that um, our clothes are very uh, colorful. We uh, love music and we love dance and um, food. We have some like spices similar to some Indian food uh, or Persian food. The language is very unique. It's very different than other languages in the, in the region. You could hear the influence also from other languages in it, but it's a very distinct culture very distinct people and even the look. Um, some people think we are Persian, but we, we can tell the difference. And what was that journey like, leaving Iraq, going to Turkey and living in a refugee camp? I remember um, my family left before me because I was visiting my grandparents. And the next morning I came home, my uncle dropped me off and my entire family had left already, but my father stayed because of me and my sister. So I came home and nobody was there. We heard that a lot of people have left. And um, I was like, oh my God, how long did they leave? And then I saw a tea kettle on the stove and I touched it, it was warm. And I knew somebody's still in the house. And then we left. So we left to the Turkish border. And by the time we were there, we stayed a few days, we were just leaving the cities because our cities were getting bombed by the government. But it reached a point where they kept sending airplanes to um, keep bombing our cities. So we had no choice but to leave the entire country and, and like, uh, seek refuge in Turkey. So we had to cross the border between Iraq and Turkey. And it took us three days of walking through the mountains in March, which is a cold month in that region. Now when I remember it, I remember it as like, it feels like I'm watching a movie that I watched before. But I also remember walking within a few feet from mines, landmines. Staying was hard because of the war, leaving was hard because you didn't know what's going to happen to you also. And this was the beginning of your idea that you wanted to help others you sort of became a healer as a teenager. Yeah, I started off with the Red Cross and it was pretty awesome because I didn't know what to do with myself as a 16 year old who really, I really loved school and I really loved learning and um, 
had dreams to become a doctor and I lost all of it. Not only I lost my country, I lost my home, I lost the dream, I even lost my identity. Because as a refugee, you have no identity at that time. You are, you have a refugee number. I just couldn't accept that and I said, okay, what can... And I didn't even think about it. I had the opportunity to help and I didn't know I'm capable of helping until I was put in that situation. How did you pick Canada? We didn't choose Canada, Canada chose us. And um, it was, uh, I'm so, so grateful for that to happen. Before Canada, we were um, interviewed by the Finnish embassy. So we were gonna go to Finland. Uh, and for some reason, they rejected us, thank God because that meant we ended up coming to Canada. So we were selected by the Canadian immigration. We um, got interviewed and they accepted us. Um, it's a big family and uh, we were all young. So we had like some great opportunities ahead of us. And from there, you eventually got married, uh, mm -hmm. a daughter, mm -hmm. um, and you became a single mother. Mm -hmm and you changed your life actually after you became a single mother you had a career in finance mm -hmm. and then something happened and you decided that you're going to change it all as mm -hmm. a single mother yeah because i knew that life has more than what i had at that time or what i was at that time and i knew there was a purpose beyond what i am seeing and living and I wanted to pursue that. I knew that there was more than what I was living and what I was seeing at that time about myself. And my passion was always since childhood is to make people feel better about themselves. I would sometimes do people's eyebrows or facials. I was cutting my siblings' hairs. And so those aesthetic touches, I, I had it all these years. And when these challenges arise for me about eight years ago and life changed with the divorce and, and uh, my job and all that, I was like, I have nothing to lose and I want to pursue, pursue this dream. And I went back to school for it. What was the most difficult challenge that you faced as a newcomer? in Canada? Because they spoke English, which was amazing and very, very helpful. I think the culture shock for my family because no one spoke English and uh, adjusting and getting used to that took, took about maybe five years. My parents had the fear also for their children to be integrated because to them integration meant that they will lose ties with their culture and their language and their beliefs. And so they operated from fear because of that. And for children, it was difficult too, because now they're growing up in a different society with different, you know, it's a different world. So they're the one who would be open-minded to change and integration. So there was that friction between, you know, parents keeping their, the ties of their background and, and the kids who wanted to fit in. You recently did something that probably uh, many mothers might be terrified to do, but you put her on a plane to go to Iraq to see her family and her father. Yeah, <laughs> first time. Yeah. After nine years, so she had the opportunity to go visit and I wanted to give her that opportunity. It's scary to do that, uh, especially with now the political situation in, in Iraq is not really ideal. I don't think it ever was since all my years and I'm turning, I am 42 actually. Um, but I, I wanted her to have that experience of what life is like over there and spend some time with her, you know, grandparents, uncles, cousins that she's never met in, in her, all her life. It took me nine years to do it because I was also afraid for nine years. And um, in the recent years, I've done quite a bit of um, um, personal growth uh, and I, I, you know, through my coach, like through the coaching I was getting and, and that, that I realized that one obstacle that prevents us from living life fully is fear. So when you live in fear, you're actually not living. You're living in your comfort zone. 
and life doesn't happen in comfort zone. And because I was able to step over my fear, I'm also teaching her and showing her courage not to be afraid. For any newcomers coming to Canada, what do you suggest for them? Learning um, how, to, how to integrate and not be afraid of it because you could keep, still keep your culture alive. <laughs> I, I still see, because um, I see the community, I see the Kurdish community, and I see the people who have integrated and embraced the amazing things about this country, what it has to offer, is that don't be afraid to integrate and, and mix and language. Language is really crucial. The first thing you need to do is learn the language so that you can communicate. And when you communicate, you feel more empowered because when you don't speak the language, um, it's, it's, you don't feel empowered. You feel, I, I, but I also embraced the amazing things that Canada offered me as a refugee and the opportunities that I would have never had if I wasn't here. And sometimes I wonder how life would have been had I gone back to Iraq. It would certainly not look like this. <laughs>